Hi, it's Louise from Spiral Bright Insight and I want to talk about the new moon in Aquarius that we have um, on Friday this week, the 9th of February. Um, now the new moon is happening at 20 degrees, 40 minutes of Aquarius when the sun and the moon meet at this specific point in their chart. And of course, new moons are always about the beginning of a cycle, the start of the new lunar cycle. What is interesting about, well, there's many interesting things about this new moon, um, but it is taking place on a number one day. When we add the digits up from the date, it, we take it down to the number one, which is the number of new beginnings. It's the first number in the sequence of zip one to nine, um, and it is very much about a reset and the birthing of something new. Now, what I want to do um, with this new moon video is just to talk about, um, I'll talk about the energies in a more general way, and then I want to pull out some of the nuances of the energy and this moon and what is likely to be coming through for us. Um, so, um, when we sort of think about Aquarian energy, obviously Aquarian energy is very much sort of the topic of the day in the astrology world because we've got Pluto now in Aquarius until September. So we've been talking a lot about Aquarian energies and Aquarius is the 11th sign of the zodiac. It is ruled, its modern ruler is Uranus, um, which has been very active of late and will continue to be so. Um, but this energy of Aquarius is very much about um, sort of the collective. So it rules groups, communities, and um, wider sort of social circles, friendships. Um, Aquarius is the water barrier. Now, many people always think, or often think that Aquarius is a water sign because of the symbology or symbolism of this sign. But the water bearer is actually here to collect the water to transmute it, to clear it, to remove sort of lower vibrations and toxins and anything that is stuck, bring it and return it to its neutral state and then um, sort of provide it again, so give it out. Um, so this is very much a sign of clearing and cleansing energies and a time when we are being encouraged to return to a state of neutrality. And um, Aquarius is air though so this is very much about information its speed and of course energy is also very linked to frequency and vibration and um, so you know there's a lot going on now Aquarius is the eccentric in the zodiac it's the maverick it wants to rebel against things that it doesn't sort of feel are right or for the greater good um, it's very unconventional, sort of left field, outside of the box or out of the box thinking and approach. And we associate with Aquarius with technology and with science, but really that is because it is such a forward thinking, futuristic energy that comes through. Um, and there's also the real sort of strong humanitarian approach with Aquarius because it is about the collective energy, you know, it wants to find a solution that will benefit everybody, not just the fair few. Um, and what's also interesting is Aquarius is very much linked to galactics um, and galactic energy. So again, you know, this is a time when potentially we're going to have more galactic activations. And I will talk about the galactic chart as well as part of this video. So, um, we have a square to Uranus in the chart, which is the moon's ruler. So Uranus is very strong at this time. It has only recently turned direct after having been retrograde for a number of months. So the fact that Uranus is ruling this lunation is really significant. And of course, Uranus is about disruption. It's about chaos. It's about breaking things apart where they need to, where things have perhaps become stagnant. Um, but it's also about um, sort of pushing us in ways where we are going to be encouraged to grow. And when Uranus is active, it can often trigger a great awakening. So where things have become stuck, where things have become stagnant, um, I'm getting the word petrified, where, um, you know, things become completely solidified. 
and it's very difficult for energy to sort of create flow. Um, where that has happened, Uranus will come in and break it apart. Now, Uranus is not always gentle. Um, it can have a bad reputation because if you are sitting very comfortably in your comfort zone, um, you know, and it's no longer sort of promoting and encouraging your growth, then Uranus is going to, is the planet and the energy that is going to shift you out of that. Um, and it is, like I said, it's not always a gentle energy. Um, but, in, and also it's very sudden but it is for our greatest good. So where we've been come stuck in certain ways of doing, certain ways of being, certain ways of believing, perceiving, um, thinking, um, and where um, energy has become stuck, Uranus is here to really break through that. And because Uranus is working through the sign of Taurus, which is fixed Earth, um, yes, we're going to see lots of um, sort of physical effects um, of Uranus at work in Taurus, but we are also going to see um, lots of mental effects as well. And I really do feel that that is um, all about awakening. So the fact that this new moon is taking place at 20 degrees means that we are now in the third deacon of Aquarius and the third deacon is linked to our more spiritual selves. So again, you know, it is about taking us into the future, considering new ideas, new ways, things that maybe go against the grain, go against convention and go against expectation, but that are actually going to shift us into where we need to be. Um, it is about bringing us back into a more neutral state, a more balanced state, because that is where we're supposed to be. We're not supposed to be in fight or flight all the time. Um, but, you know, this is a really strong, powerful moon. So before I go and talk about the galactic alignments, um, there's a really interesting um, asteroid, which is Atlantis. It's called Atlantis. I will share the code um, in the information box below if you want to go and look at it and see where it is in your birth chart. Um, but it is currently, or it will be at 19 degrees, 36 minutes of Leo at the point of this full moon. So it is in an opposition to the sun and the moon, and it is also in a square to Uranus. Now, this is really interesting. Um, because for me, and again, you know, everything is open to interpretation. There is no sort of one size fits all in astrology, certainly not when you're talking about energy. Um, but for me, um, this is sort of suggesting that there are, there, are, there is wisdom, certainly memories um, that we are sort of bringing through from the times of Atlantis that are needed to help us now as we sort of move through this ascension process and shift and evolve. And the fact that there is a square to Uranus um, suggests to me that these are memories that maybe have been very deeply hidden from us, certainly buried sort of deep within the earth and deep within the earth's core that are ready to be um, brought to light. So part of the awakening of Uranus and this Aquarian new moon um, for me is about mem remembering our times in Atlantis and the lessons that we learnt from that. What happened there? What were the energies like? what happened at the downfall, what led to it, um, so that we can remember that, we can process any trauma that we are still carrying, because I think many of us that are incarnated here at this time were involved in Atlantis in some form. So it is about accessing those memories, bringing them up to the surface so that they can be healed, so that they can be transmuted, but also so that we can use the wisdom and the memories and the information from that time within our heritage to help us move forward. So again, sort of the energy of the sun and the moon and Aquarius are going to harness that wisdom and that energy to help us sort of move forward. And it's also because I didn't use the word quantum earlier when I was talking about Aquarius and I should have done because Aquarius very much is about a quantum leap. 
you know, it is about progress and sort of taking us, you know, into our future. But how do we do it? Um, you know, when Aquarius is active, it is a quantum leap. Things can change in a split second. So again, it's really interesting that that asteroid is there in the chart. And it's one that I've been introduced to very recently because I've been exploring some um, memories from Atlantis. Um, so I was really um, fascinated and excited to see it sort of playing such a significant part in this new moon. It just feels, you know, there are no mistakes. The universe knows exactly what it's doing. So that felt very relevant. Um, so yeah, I recommend if you um, do feel um, connections to Atlantis, go and look and see where that asteroid was in your birth chart when you were born and um, because you know I think you might find it very interesting and um, so just looking at the galactic chart and I pull the charts from galactic astro chart.com which is Julia Balazs's website she is my mentor um highly recommend you know pulling a chart um if you want to see some of your main sort of fixed star connections but we've got some strong galactic energies at play and I'm just going to pull out a few of them at this time for this new moon. Um, I've talked about Pluto being conjunct Aladfar in the Lyran constellation in a previous video. So go back and look at that to see what the themes are. But just on a very sort of top line basis, um, it is helping us through our galactic human heritage to move from a state of fear into one of love. Altair in the Aquila constellation is also in a conjunction with Pluto. And this is the eagle energy. This is sovereignty. This is courage, bravery, majesty, um, stepping into a much higher perspective and viewpoint through the eagle. Um, so, you know, that energy is really helping us to transform, which is what Pluto is all about and to evolve. Um, Saturn is also very active in the galactic chart because it is conjunct Deneb Adige in the Cygnus constellation. Obviously, the swan being very graceful, very strong, very mighty, very revered and very protected. Certainly in the UK, there is a protection order on the swans. Um, but it's very um, linked to angelic energy. Um, swans can be quite ferocious and quite fierce if they feel that they are under attack. So again, it's sort of reminding us of this inner strength that we don't have to appear or, you know, outwardly be aggressive. Um, you know, take on a much more graceful stance and viewpoint and approach to life. Um, so that's a really interesting sort of energy that's coming through. And then we have Saturn in an opposition to a star in the Draco constellation, which is activating dragon energy. Now I'm going to talk about dragon energy in a minute, so I'll come back to that. Um, Jupiter is conjunct Cassiopeia. Um, constellation. So that is about sort of expanding our connection to the angelic frequency, to the divine feminine, to a real sort of queenly energy. And um, there's also um, an alignment with Tarwin in the Andromedan constellation. Now Andromeda is very otherworldly um, from where we're standing. Um, it's very fluid and um, the energy is not fixed. But when Tarwin is one of the Andromedan stars and when that star is activated um, again it's about um, connecting to the divine feminine but the more warrior aspect so the fierce sovereign very feminine way and very feminine approach which you know is in contrast to where perhaps we have um, come from in the past in our history in an, in our and in our lineage so you know this is very groundbreaking very new energy and um, that we are being sort of exposed to to help us work through um all these changes that we're going through um the star Nihal in the Lepus constellation which is the hair which lies to um below the Orion constellation this star is in a trine to the sun and the moon and Nihal is very strongly associated with the blue ray frequency. Now, the blue ray frequency is something that is very, very close to my heart. I have shared um, information about blue ray star seeds. I will link the video. Highly recommend you watch it if you're interested in blue ray. 
Um, but this again is very much a connection to the divine feminine. Trines are very harmonious, very supportive, very flowing energy. Um, Nihal is very much linked to protection. There is a close link to Archangel Michael with the Blu ray. Um, but also holding space and helping to transmute and to clear energy, which again is what the moon and the sun are doing in Aquarius. Um, Uranus is helping with that process as well. Um, it's about sort of shedding what no longer suits us, what no longer fits, what is no longer in alignment so that we can expand into sort of the more whole version of ourselves. Um, it's very gentle energy. It's very strong though, the, um, the leapers being the hare or the rabbit. So quite quiet, sitting in the background, not really necessarily making a noise, but having a really big impact nevertheless. And I've talked about that in the video about the Blu-ray star seeds, about how it's not all about militancy and aggression, you know, and standing up um, for um, for the unjust but we feel that at the same time. So it's more taking a back seat and sort of working the energy um, in the background, but still very potent and very powerful. Um, there's also a sense of um, teaching wisdom information through the Gemini connection and sharing that as well so that, you know, people can really start to learn more about who they are and what we're sort of dealing with. Um, and yeah hold space holders that is really really important so this is a beautiful energy that is supporting the new moon um but i also need to come back to dragon energy because the new moon is welcoming the year of the dragon in the chinese um calendar chinese zodiac and it is the year of the wood dragon so it's really interesting that we're stepping into this new energy at the same time as Saturn is opposing Draco, Thuban in the Draco constellation, which is the dragon energy. And Saturn is about, you know, the lessons that we have to learn to help us mature, to help us master what we're here to work with, to um, sort of take responsibility. And dragon energy is clearly powerful. You know, it's linked to mythical um, stories. Um, but also interesting to note that dragons are not reptilian. They are actually of avian descent. So there is this beautiful avian sort of theme coming through with the eagle, with the swan, with the dragon. You know, the ability um, to spread the message, to carry the energy, to take flight, to rise, to soar, to have that freedom that, you know, maybe we don't have when we're in a physical um, body. Um, this the, all this avian energy is sort of helping us to lift out of that and to see the bigger picture <clears throat> and to feel more speed, more flow um, and to, yeah, just sort of tune into the frequencies of that, which is really, really beautiful. Now, dragons are very much about um, having the flexibility, being able to embrace change. There's a strong theme of dark and light because dragons tend to be quite neutral. So, um, you know, this is not about taking sides. And again, just going back to the Aquarian, the water bearer, you know, neutralizing the energy. You know, we do not have to take sides. You know, we can stand at a point, at a centre point in a neutral state. And that is where, um, you know, the polarity starts to dissolve, the division and the separation starts to dissolve, and we can come into more balance and more harmony. And as we do that, you know, our outer world starts to change to reflect our inner state of mind and state of being. So dragon energy is also about... Um, transmuting energy you know the fire clears um and transmutes lower vibrations it is about um deep ancient wisdom and intelligence that the dragons are able to bring with them to help us shift and to help us grow to help us release old patterns um, there's also a real um, sort of sense of the dragon is here to help us find our inner voice and our authentic um, self and to believe in ourselves and again we've got this beautiful um, conjunction between the north node and Chiron coming up um, nine ten days after this new moon I will talk about that in a separate video but again this dragon energy is really going to support that in a really beautiful and um, sensitive heart-centered way 
Um, dragons are ruthless, but they're determined and they want what's best for us. Um, and it is very much about sort of integrating that dark, that light, the shadow, the light, you know, bringing up what has been hidden. The shadow that rises to the surface has to be integrated. It can't be rejected anymore. And the dragon energy is here to help us and to support us in that process. Um, with the wood element of this um, Chinese New Year, with the wood dragon, it is very much about roots, finding our roots, grounding into ourselves, connecting to the body, connecting to nature, caring for our bodies, caring for nature, caring for the earth. Um, but again, you know, all that wisdom that is locked in within nature, within the earth. And again, you know, with Taurus, sorry, Uranus and Taurus, in that stepping into that third deacon, which is the more spiritual, because Uranus will be get, um, reaching 20 degrees of Taurus um, very soon. It is about unlocking the wisdom that is held within that fixed earth. All these secrets, all that information, all that, um, yeah, that consciousness that is held within the fixed earth is about to be revealed. That is kind of what is coming through. And I think the new moon is the start of that process. Um, it has been happening for me already over the last week. Um, but, you know, I'm sure I'm not the only person to be sort of connecting with stuff that's maybe been locked away. But again, you know, this is very much a time for that process to start. And because it's air energy, once it starts, it's going to be hard to stop. And um, so, yeah, it is just all about our growth, really. It is a very exciting time. It is a very powerful new moon. There's going to be a lot of energy a lot of movement, a lot of surprises with Uranus being so active. So, um, you know, just having that understanding that this is what's happening and that it's needed often helps. So I really hope that by sharing these sort of videos that, that it does help you to see the bigger picture. Um, but yeah, I'd say go, with, try not to resist if there's change coming up, try not to resist it because, you know, it is, there is a, there is quite a lot of fixed energy with the sun, the moon, Uranus, um, even the asteroid Atlantis is in a fixed sign of Leo. So there is a lot of fixed energy, but the air is coming through to break through that. And when change happens, because it's fixed energy, it is for the long term. You know, it's not something that's going to happen and then we'll go back to where we were. You know, this is long term, deep, permanent change that we are experiencing. So um, exciting times. Um, thank you for watching. If you want to follow me, I'm on Instagram. I'm obviously on this platform, YouTube. I'm on Facebook, Spiral Bright Insight. Um, I also have a newsletter, so I send out a monthly newsletter, so sign up for my mailing list on my website, which is spiralbright.uk. Please feel free to comment, share, it's really good to find, you know, to hear other voices, other, um, yeah, just what people are kind of experiencing, and to know that we're not alone, because we are so not alone in this, so, um, you know, this, I just, I'm so grateful to the internet for being able to connect us all in this way. And again, that's very Aquarian. So it's kind of very fitting that, um, you know, we're going through this process together. But yeah, that's all for now. I will be back with more. There's lots more to share. So um, for now, have an amazing um, rest of your day.